All right, welcome to Broker to Broker, sponsored by AIM, Association of Independent Mortgage Experts. I am your host, J.P. Hussey of the Hussey Team Mortgage Advisors, and today is Dre Day. Got my boy Andreas Munar, Keystone Alliance Mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having What's me. Up? It's such a pleasure to be here with you, J.P. So we've known each other for how long now? Four or five years? About we're a part of a, a special group that we're not allowed to talk about. Yeah, it is a special right? group. In order to, um, to talk about it, we'd have to kill you first. Yes, exactly. So now you're in Puerto Rico, though, right? I am. We're going to get into that because I want to talk more about that if that's cool with you because that yeah. goes into you trusting your team and all that fun jazz. Yeah, absolutely. No, I would definitely uh, love to talk about that for sure. When when'd you get in? You look great in those headphones, by the way. <laughs> I can't. I hate you. This, um, this interview is going to be kind of <laughs> tough because I've known Dre for so long and all we do is bust each other's chops the whole time. Yeah, and yeah. we're going we're gonna to get yeah. serious, though. 100%. Um, I just got in on yesterday morning. Yeah. Quick, easy little flight. Yeah, but hours. you've been flying. You, you're everywhere though. I mean, you got Austin the end of the next month. So you know. do you. I do too. Yeah. As of yesterday. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're, I mean, we're going to get into that. Um, but because you can do those type of things with the team around you, I want to dive into that more. Yeah. But first we got to know your story. I know a lot of your story and we don't have to go crazy into it. I want to know more about your mortgage story. Right. If we could start, like, how long have you been in the business? And I want to I want to hear the whole thing. Um, so I started in the industry in 2006 when I was 22 years old. OK. Um, I had a, a relationship at the time in state college. He was a real estate agent mm -hmm. and he had a friend who was a mortgage broker, needed an assistant. Obviously, at the time, it was like the mortgage business was booming. So it was a brokerage, though. Yeah. So you yeah. got in as a mortgage broker. Yeah. So I've been in the industry 13 years and 10 of those years I've been a broker. Okay. So three of those years were years you that... You like to kind of kick out the door some of those years. Yeah. Yeah. Three of those years just didn't exist in my life. Right. All right. So you came um, in as an assistant. I did. Why did you decide to do mortgage though? Like why? Um, well, my partner at the time was a real estate agent and said, hey, I've got a got friend you. who needs an assistant. And I was like, you know, I mean, I was 22 years old. I was like, sure, I'll try whatever. Yeah. Um, and I just... Literally week one, I just fell in love with it. Uh, before that, I was in the restaurant industry, which was, it was crazy. You know, the restaurant industry is like, just, it's it's busy. It's fast paced. Fast -paced. like the mortgage world. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what I, I could correlate it right away. The phones were ringing off the hook. The fax machine was going off. Mm -hmm. Your emails was going off, you know. Um, well, and you like that adrenaline. Right away. You, you, you kind of need that, right? Yeah. But we, we see that a lot in our industry where... Um, I've talked to a lot of people sitting right here and we talk about who to recruit and a lot of people like do not, especially in today's day and age, don't recruit within the industry, mm -hmm. find someone outside of the industry and kind of mold them to yeah. what you want it to be. And a lot of it comes from the restaurant world yeah. because they're so service based. Yeah. They, they run side by side, right? Yeah. Uh, two of the people that I recruited actually are from the restaurant industry because, mm -hmm. you know, they're used to working. Any 50, of these guys? 60, yeah, two of them, Tatiana and Catherine. Really? Okay. You know, they're used to working 50, 60 hour weeks. Mm -hmm. They're used to working nights, holidays, weekends. And so for me, it's like if you're willing to put that kind of hustle in mm -hmm. to a 50, 60 hour a week job, why wouldn't you just come to the mortgage industry and really put that hustle in and, and work a, a little less, still have your nights and your weekends? Mm -hmm. um, More self satisfying, too. For I sure. mean, it's great, you know, your server, your brain. You know, this is, I've never worked in the restaurant world, but, you know, bring here's your food, <laughs> here's a drink. That's great and all. You're making people happy, but, like, you're literally putting people in the houses. I mean, yeah. it's I mean that's no BS. That's a little, it's, it's amazing. I mean, you, I mean, you've told the stories. I follow you on Facebook, obviously. You tell them all. Yeah. It's great. All right, so. It's great. And it's awesome. <laughs> so you got in. Uh, how long yeah. were you at that? At that uh, spot as an assistant. Um, what were you doing as an assistant? Just So as an assistant, I was basically doing everything for him because okay. he basically. So back then it was like you put an ad in the yellow pages mm -hmm. and your phone was just ringing off the hook. Right. You put 100 percent financing and your phone was just ringing off the really? hook. I mean, you had a 550 credit score. It was like, sure, go find whatever house you want. This is 2006. This is before the crash. Anything was kind of doable. Yeah. Everything at that time. was doable. Mm -hmm. um, so he kind of just taught me a little bit and then I was doing everything for him. I'm, I was taking applications, submitting loans. You didn't need to be licensed back then either. Right. So it was, you know, everything, literally everything. Um, and then since my partner at the time was a real estate agent, 
I realized the potential of money that I could make being a loan officer versus being an assistant. So I went to the owner and I said, hey, I'd like to become a loan officer. My partner at the time was sending him, you know, two or three deals a month. Mm -hmm. um, and back then you could do like a 50-50 split, a 50-60 split. And so I saw that and I was like, why, why would I stay your assistant when I could just have my boyfriend at the time mm -hmm. send me business and, and make more income? So I approached him about that and he said no. And so I split off and that was probably about a year later. Um, I went to another mortgage broker. What then. was the name of the first company still in existence? It does not exist. It was Access Home Lending. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I went to Apple Mortgage. Um, Apple Mortgage? <laughs> are they still around? They're, they're not I around. I like that name, though. Yeah, it's got a nice little ring to it. We ate apples before we walked in here. <laughs> what a coincidence, right? Yeah, right. Um, so Apple Mortgage, was that a brokerage? That was a brokerage. Okay. Yeah. Went to so Apple you've been mortgage. broker, I mean, except for those three years, you had your hiccup, which I know a little bit about. You've been broker yeah. for a while. Yeah, I've been a broker for 10 years. Um, I really just love the broker model. I love the the ability to switch a loan from one broker to from one lender to another mm -hmm. lender. I love the options as far as rates go, service goes. Um, you know, I've dabbled obviously in retail, but it's kind of like you you get stuck in that. That like mm -hmm. if once it's a no, you're done. You're done. And that's it. Yeah, I remember when I was in retail, um, you know, it's a funky loan is getting towards the end. And, 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 you know, when something's funky at the end, you just want it either gone yeah. or just let's let's close it. And yeah. you're just like, you got to go like you start calling other mortgage yeah. guys or, or girls being like, yo, just take this. Here's <laughs> what you got to do. I don't even want it. I don't care if I get paid to get it done. Yeah. In the broker world, you can you can flip that and you have all the info and it's staying in house. It, I mean, yeah, we could talk about that all day, but that's one of the For benefits. Sure. All right, so Apple Mortgage, you were there. Yep. For and, uh, how many years? I was at Apple Mortgage from 2007 until probably about another year. Okay. And then there was this big mortgage broker in town. Um, so this is like 2008 when the shit kind of hit the fan. So, yeah, that, that's it. So 2008, I went to Priority Mortgage, and they're a huge mortgage broker. Like, they were one of the biggest in Pennsylvania. Are they still around? They're not. He went to... Um, he went to jail for embezzlement Whoa. Um, and stuff like that. So that was 2008. In 2009, uh, December of 2009, I was on vacation in Florida, and I got a call from my manager. My manager said, you can go ahead and file for unemployment. Um, the, I forget what they're called, the, the police or whatever mm -hmm. just came in and, and shut us down. Wow. So that was December of 2009. Um, and then in, in 2010, I actually was like, okay, I'm just kind of done with the mortgage business. Um, and I had decided I was going to go back to school to become an accountant. So I had applied. I um, can't, <laughs> I can't see you as an accountant. Why? I don't know. I just don't see it. I'm good with numbers. No, you are great I'm with kidding. numbers. I'm kidding. Accounting Can you see that Dre the accountant? To do with numbers. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> nothing. Uh, no? I don't know. It's tough. <laughs> Possibly. Not just sitting behind a desk. Like, you, you can, you can do anything you put your mind to, Dre. That's so, so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you were going to go back to school. Uh, yeah, so I applied to Penn State. Um, I got into Penn State. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's just what I'm going to do. And so part of my story is also that I'm undocumented. And when I applied to Penn State, Penn State was like, okay, we need proof of your citizenship. Mm -hmm. And I was like. That I had gotten accepted, and I actually got accepted to directly to um, the School of Business, which I forget what it's called. Um, Smeal. Smeal. Yep, I had gotten accepted right to Smeal, um, and that's what I was going to do. But then um, their paperwork, you know, said, "Hey, we need proof of your citizenship," and I was like, "Oh, about that." Yeah. Um, and you just really just this past year, two thousand nineteen, you really started talking more about that. I did. I did. Um, I met a mentor last year who really brought me out of my shell as far uh -huh. as, you know, this is your story. That's your truth. You know, nobody can take that away from you. Um, and I, I, yeah, just last year. I, I yeah. Came. I mean, not to get off topic, but, uh, I mean, that's one thing I love about you. I mean, I follow, I mean, you post at what? 8:30 in the morning, I think. <laughs> and uh, seriously, man, I, I read your stuff. I have so much respect for you of what you've done. I've seen your journey over the past four or five years of all the different things you've done. We won't start naming names, but you were out in 
I don't know, Arizona over here, trying to find yourself here. And yeah. you're constantly working on yourself. You're just with, uh, you're with Renee, right? Rodriguez, yeah. right? Yep. He's my my, my poppy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your poppy. I want to be a poppy. You're a poppy chulo. Um, he, he named you a, a poppy chulo. Yeah. But, but that's, what's really cool. And what I respect about you is you're constantly trying to evolve. Right. And, you, and that. I've seen your, your evolution over the years. Seriously. I mean, that's one thing I follow you in the morning. I look at, cause you do that, that quote or whatever you do. And you spend the time to really write out what that quote means to you. And they're pretty, I don't want to say in your face, but it's truth, they're man. They're deep, right? <laughs> they're deep and it's it's truth. I think that's one thing you'll get back to. It's simplicity and just the truth, right? Yeah. Um, and we'll dive into that more again, but that just popped up and I wanted to make sure I said that. I wanted to talk about that at the beginning. I really respect yeah. that about you. No, I um, appreciate that. All right. So accountant. You're, yeah, you went so to I went school to for that? an accountant, and uh, Penn State was like, "All right, we need proof of your citizenship." And I was like, "Oh, that's mm -hmm. kind of, that's gonna kind of be that's gonna be an issue. Yeah, that's not gonna work out." So um, <laughs> then um, I started searching online for lenders that would uh, let me work for them because at this point, Apple Mortgage had shut down, Access Home Lending had shut down. You know, this was the crisis. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest uh, broker in State College had shut down. Yeah. And um, I, are we allowed to say lender names? I guess. I you mean, can do whatever true. you want here. I worked, yeah. I worked there. Um, then um, I reached out to Freedom Mortgage. Okay. And this is then when the whole net branch thing was big. Mm -hmm. And I mean, my production, I was doing like two or three loans a month. What's this, 2011-ish? 10-ish? 2010-ish. 10-ish. Yeah, 2010. I didn't get in until 2011, bro. In the business? Mm -hmm. Really? I've only been nine years, yeah. Still don't know what the 2011 hell. 2011 still seems like it was yesterday, but when you look at like 2011, 2020, that was nine years ago. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Good. I got in right when the comp changes. I started Wells Fargo. So right when you could only get paid on one side, remember yeah. that's like when I got in. I had no taste of this, anything beforehand. Is that where you started as Wells? Well, yeah. I had an in there, so I was there for like a couple of years, and that was a shit show. So then I had to, <laughs> I had to leave and go somewhere else. But we're babbling, so go back. Um. And I applied at Freedom, and Freedom was like, here, we'll give you your own branch. And I was like, oh, <laughs> really? Oh, it was in okay. that branch thing. So, okay, yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. So I did that for a period of time. and So you were running a P&L and doing all that fun, fun yeah. stuff? And you yeah. were doing like two or three loans a month? Yeah. And it was just you? It was just me. Yeah. Okay, and they gave you a branch, okay. But that's when I started to realize, like, there's got to be more than being able to do two, or two to three more loans. And plus you're running a right. P&L, so you're starting to see, like, numbers i am right so i can see the evolution occurring right now of where you're and that's at now exactly where it basically started was in 2010 they gave me a branch and then i was only doing two or three loans and they were like are you going to do more and i was <laughs> like what do you what do you mean yeah, yeah yeah um but then that's kind of where it started as far as um there's i've got to do more activities right so then um what happened was i picked up the phone i called one real estate broker i did a presentation for them one of their agents liked me mm -hmm. they started using me and then from there they started talking to other agents in their office and that kind of just gave me the confidence to reach out to other real estate brokers and start mm -hmm. doing presentations so that was from like 2010 to 2012 i started doing a few more transactions then in 2012 um, we were still kind of going through that, um, the recession period. Yeah. Um, so 2012, then it was December. Yeah, we no, were, cause I'm rates sorry. were still pretty low at that point in time. Yeah. 11 to 12. I remember I yes. did a ton of FHA streamlines at Wells Fargo. Um, they took six months to close, but. I didn't even know what a streamline was until I got into the broker world oh, yeah. actually. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. weird. <laughs> Is it weird? <laughs> Actually, um, I, I didn't even know FHA existed until after 2010 because 2006 to like 2010 well, was subprime. Right, so though you didn't even FHA have that. Didn't, anyway, no, okay. it didn't exist. That's good to know. I didn't know that. Um, and then in 2012, mm -hmm. yep, at the beginning, just, uh, January of 2012, Freedom said, and I actually, this is the first time I think I'm ever going to publicly say this. Whoa. Uh, only a few people know this. Uh, do we have one of those like noise things we can do right now? That like fart noise? Those noise. They had all those. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just go ahead. They were playing all these noises back here, Ricky, my boy. Um, January of 2012, um, I was working 
and rates were good. Like uh-huh. my pipeline was filling up. Uh-huh. I was super excited. And my email stopped working. Well, they just cut you off? I was like, what's what's going on? I mean, I literally probably had like 15 loans in the pipeline. Uh-huh. Like, I was like super excited. And you're like, still a one man shop, right? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, this is going to be amazing. I'm going to have a big year. Uh-huh. And then my email stopped working and I was like, this is weird. So I called uh, I called up here to the New Jersey office and I was like, "My like, I can't yeah. get into any of my systems. And um, they were all like, oh, well, we're going to have to have Lynn call you. So Lynn was um, the operations manager for the branches. And I knew that something was wrong as soon as they were like, well, Lynn's going to have to call you about this. Uh-huh. And she called me back and she said, yeah, we're, we're letting all the branches go that aren't doing at least a million dollars in production. And I mean, me doing two or three loans a month, I was not right. doing. But you were just, you were ramping up. Yes. Of course. And that's and exactly how I right remember off. it, especially when you said rates were low. Cause I remember that January, uh-huh. I had like 15 loans mm-hmm. in the pipe. I was like, and I was begging her. I was like, Lynn, I've got 15 loans. Like I'm, I'm going to turn the. So what happened with those loans? They just kept them. So and they just cut you off. Like, how's that work? They cut me off. They finished it. And, um, that was a battle. That was the first time I had a battle with understanding the fact that, you know, a company had cut me off. They wanted to keep the money in my p and um, And it was a battle to get that money from them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the sad part is that they were working with me through all those loans, right? So their in-house people were reaching out to me, keeping me updated, asking me what, you know. And then at the end, when those loans funded, I was like, okay, I, I want my money. They were like, no. So I had to fight with them mm. and fight with them and eventually I, did I remember get this story I didn't know it I think you maybe talked about it a little bit um I didn't know it was freedom yeah and I mean we don't want to keep naming names but then the <laughs> next one later on we could talk about and kind of the same situation a little bit yeah down the road but anyway freedom so then where'd so you go after that freedom, after no email um after freedom I had been approached I we could this story could go on forever. I, w- I just want to get to so, where you're at now because I'm okay. really trying so to get to then, how you started your shop, then you left and came back because you realized you were in a shouldn't have done it. So after that happened, then I got approached by somebody else, by mm-hmm. uh, yeah, by somebody else. Okay, and they were like, "Hey, I'm opening up a broker. I just mm-hmm. opened up a broker shop. Can can you come on board and help me help me open it?" I was like, "Sure," um, and that's really when again. I had already started taking off, so I had built that confidence that I could do loans, right? So then I went to this broker shop, um, and by the end of 2014, the broker shop I went to was also a partnership with a real estate company. So I thought I was going to get even more business. And then by the end of, by the middle of like 2014, I mean, my business had just completely taken off. I had hired an assistant um, and I understood the fact of hiring an assistant was taking me to the next level. So I went to that owner and I said, hey, 95% of the pipeline that I've brought you in at this point has been my production. You Mm -hmm. know, your agents aren't handing me business. You're not feeding me business. It's all my production. I need a little bit more of a raise. And I was paying for my own assistant. It was coming out of my gross pay. Yeah, yeah, of course. Which I was fine with because I I started to understand and grasp, you know, business. And Mm -hmm. he told me no. And so then in 2014, my assistant and I said, it's time. Peace, we're out. To make a move, Uh yeah. So um, we we unfortunately didn't get the last say. Um, He got wind that we were going to make a move. Mm -hmm. And... uh, one day in August of 2014, our email stopped working. <laughs> and uh, in two seconds Seems later- Seems to be a constant for you here, Dre. It is. And, and two seconds later, he walked in and he said, I got wind that you guys are leaving. Yeah, and yeah. we were like, yep, we are. And um, so we parted ways. And again, that became a battle for my own money. Yeah, yeah. We went to court, so on and so forth. So in 2014, I opened up uh, Moonar Mortgage right. back then. And um, that's how I kind of started my own business. All right. And then in between, you're, you're running hard. Now, in our, in this industry, it goes in waves sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. Back in the day, there was a lot of brokers and then they're gone. Then the banks yeah. kind of took over. And then it went to those like smaller correspondents, right? Yeah. And now it's kind of swinging back to that that broker world, right? Absolutely. So you you were kind of ahead of this, <clears throat> this uh, schedule. Like right now, a brokers brokers yeah. are hot. You yeah, know, brokers are better. The whole thing. Yeah. You were you were ahead of it, but then you saw the correspondent type. Uh, uh, the correspondent lenders were were hot. You yeah. jumped over yeah. for a little bit, 
but then realized broker was the best spot for you. For right? me personally, yeah. So 2014, I opened up the shop, Moon yep. Mortgage. 2016, um, so I really believe in coaching and training and mm -hmm. all of that. So in 2013, I got a coach um, and I had met uh, a lady in Florida who also owned a broker shop in Pennsylvania. And mm -hmm. we stayed in constant contact. So in 2016, when she decided to leave her business partner, um, we had always kept in contact and she needed a place to at least hang her license. Sure. So I said, hey, I'll, I'll sponsor you, like come on board and you know, you do your own thing. And then whenever you decide whatever you wanna do, like that's fine. Because that's what somebody had done for me. Mm -hmm. um, before I went off on my own, I said, hey, I need a place to hang my license until I can figure out some stuff. Um, and that person said, yes. Yeah. So I did the same for yeah. her. And what ended up happening in 2016 is she ended up actually becoming my business partner. Her name is Megan Marsh. Yep. She's out of Erie. Megan's great. Um, she's by far the best thing that has happened to me. She's incredible. Um, so 2016, we joined forces and we are total opposites, which is really why we get along. She's like this dominant, aggressive D1 athlete woman mother of four four kids i remember speaking with her in right. atlantic city and yeah she's an amazing she's woman. a beast yeah she's a beast really privileged um <clears throat> and then i'm the total opposite right i'm like this docile super friendly super like lovey-dovey kind you of are? guy <laughs> I kid, I kid. have you seen me have yeah. you seen this face <laughs> yeah look at that got um, the fade going looking good the puerto rican fade i like it the man. puerto rican beard yeah um and so 2016 that happened and we put our minds that 2017 was going to be an incredible year. Mm -hmm. We, and that happened. I brought on a bunch of people um, and 2017 was an incredible year for us. And we were being looked at by some prospective mm -hmm. lenders mm -hmm. who wanted us to jump ship. And we, we took that ship um, and we took that ship because we, Megan and I truly believed that it was the best move for not just us, but for right, our people. Of course. And who was with, were, were these guys with you at the time? Everybody was with Everybody? except Catherine. Or no, Catherine. Yeah. 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 yeah, Catherine did come with, shoot. Yes, yeah, she was. That's she really cool. In January. So all of my people came with us. And that was really the reason we made the move was because it was me and Megan were going to step out of originating. So we mm -hmm. were going to become to recruiting. Our loan partners were then going to become loan officers. So everybody was, was going to take up. a step up. Yeah. And that in the end for us was the end goal was how can we move everybody to step up? How can, you know, everybody make more money? How can everybody have more fun? And it sounded like, I mean, we're not, we don't have to talk names, but that model um, sounded like the right move at the time. It, it for was, e everyone for everyone it was supposed to be the right move and i had made moves before and i i knew what i was getting myself into so mm -hmm. i wanted to be very careful we asked a ton of questions it was six months of going back and forth and flying down there and mm -hmm. us talking to tons and tons of people and um you know we obviously talked to our team um our the culture was who we were fit. And that to me was really important. So for the most part, um, or actually all of it, the culture is really important to us as far yeah. as are you a culture fit um, for, for our company. So when we were going to make this move, it was very important that the culture and the vision and what they stood for and what we stood for matched. Mm -hmm. And it matched 200%. You know, what's really cool is you have your own, I mean, obviously you own the company now. But even when you were deciding to leave, you know, mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. You had your culture. That's more important than. That's what yeah. was probably weird. You have this culture that had to fit another per, uh, company's culture. Yeah. And then I think eventually that's why he, we pulled everyone back out and just went yeah. back to only our culture. Well, that's the thing is that the culture that, you know, was preached to us that were, mm -hmm. we were being sold. Yeah, that it wasn't. Ended up not not being so. We parted ways, and and once again, yeah. now I, we're Keystone Alliance. So you can only guess what happened. Once yeah, again, yeah, our yeah. Emails, again, our emails, emails three times. Yeah. Third time's a charm, man. They're, I didn't even think about <laughs> it. Third, third time is a charm. Now, this is the third time it happened. Dude, I keep saying like, uh, this is it, the company that I started. Like, this is it. If this doesn't work out, I'm not going back You're and working. I'm out. I'm out. What are you gonna do? I don't know. I'm not saying I'm at, it's not going to work out. I'm just saying this is my last <laughs> shot, man. 
<laughs> I'm turning off my own email. <laughs> <laughs> Is you that know? how that works? Yeah, I'm going to walk in and be like, did I just turn off my email? What's, that? What's going on? All right, so now we're here. We're, we're up to date, right? Yeah. Keystone Alliance. We're back. You guys are running the company. You have your own culture. It was the best decision for you, right? Uh, without a doubt. Now, I know you're you're living in Puerto Rico now, um, and culture is big for you, right? Mm -hmm. So has there been difficulties with that right now, that you're out there and you have a good culture? Like, how do you work that? I'm, I'm curious. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I know your people love you. No, it hasn't, it hasn't been difficult at all. That's awesome. Um, super That's because you blessed. have a, such a tight knit group of people right here. I mean, I can tell I've met them all before. They're, they're yeah. unbelievable, but you've hired and fired people and you hold people accountable. That's hard to do, right? Is it hard for you to do? It's hard for me to do. It is. It is. And, and we, we talk about that. I'm, we're a super open book. Like I, I promise you, you could ask them anything and they would, they would be able to answer it just as well as I could uh -huh. because, you know, I've worked for lots of bad bosses and mm -hmm. that's not the way that I would ever want to run a company or it's not the way I would ever want to make feel people and I tell them sometimes when I'm having a serious conversation with them as as far as like guys this is why we do it or this is why I need you to do it or it needs to be done this way mm -hmm. I tell them I said I'm telling you this because this is the business aspect of it it's not because I don't love you it's not because I don't care about you it's mm -hmm. not because you're doing a bad job it's not because we suck it's not because we're horrible it's because I need us to be better and this is the business aspect of it and I think that as long as you explain that kind of stuff to your people that this is why I'm telling you this instead of going at need, them yeah. there you go yeah, yeah 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 that's a totally different approach because so many times I mean and it's easier for you to talk to people when you're not yes. saying, hey, listen, you didn't do this. Yeah. No, this is how we should do it. And this is why, because it's going to make us all better. Right. Yeah. So com communication is so key yeah. in any business, but especially the fast paced mortgage business yeah. and people having each other's back and trusting each other. Yeah. All right, that's cool. One of the things that I get asked is, you know, mm -hmm. how did you build this? Like, how did you get to this point? Like, yeah. And it's, yeah. You, how can you, can you touch on that? Like, yeah. how did you just decide to, when did you get the balls to be like, we're hiring, we're growing? Well, first it started off with one assistant, you know, and, and, and that's when you start to see, oh, wow, like mm -hmm. this does work. Right. And then from there it, it becomes, I hired a coach. So when you're in high school and you're an athlete, mm -hmm. you, you have a coach for a reason, right? Yeah, because yeah. there's somebody who knows a little more than a specific subject right. than you do. Right. So mm -hmm. then what happens is you hire a coach and that coach was like, okay, you need to start hiring more people. And they tell you things to do and things that are uncomfortable, such as you need to stop taking 10 of threes. You need to stop talking to your real estate agents. You need to pass that off to a loan partner. You need to hire mm -hmm. somebody and you're going, I already have two people. How am I going to add a third salary? Mm -hmm. And you want me, the best person in the whole entire world, right. to stop talking to my clients. I don't care who you are. The The best way that I can put it is Ronald McDonald's does not put his own French fries in the fryer, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -mm. Right. It's just a model for success that other people have built. <coughs> and you have to be able to execute that. Once again, you have to be able to execute uh -huh. that, right? Because a lot of people don't execute it. So um, it's the same thing with loan officers. I mean, you're a successful loan officer. You know uh -huh. what to do, right? Yeah. You hand that model to success up to another loan officer and they don't do it. And I'm like banging my head against the wall going, I'm literally giving you a six figure job mm -hmm. and I'm giving you the model for success and you're just not executing it. And so um, it comes down to what Catherine said, being uncomfortable, you know, being comfortable with doing the uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it's just executing all of those things that you hear, right? So it's taking a little bit from this person that you like, yeah. a little bit from that person. And slowly it just it just ended up becoming what it is, right? So I was able to let go of and not trusting, talking. Trusting the people you bring on. That, that's hard, right? For sure. Um, and then you have to be able to fire if it doesn't work out, mm -hmm. right? And so I have, I think my whole time that I've owned the business, I fired like five five people because they just weren't working out. They weren't doing what I needed them to. Um, but as you grow, you know, you learn from other people, you execute the things that you're supposed to do. You learn how to build trust. You put mm -hmm. um, technology into place, right? So for these four, um, some of the things that they do is they stay on a video camera all day long. Even though they're in different offices, they can see each other. 
So that way it's not like, well, what are they really? doing in that? So office? there's always a video yeah. going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I again, it comes down to the to the people, not the profit. I would like to think that they get rewarded very well, right? So mm-hmm. there's no specific time off. Like there's no okay, you only get two weeks of vacation. You got to go pick up your kid this afternoon. You've got doctor's appointment. Do we do? At this point, I, for a while I've been telling them, but I think this year that they've finally understood it. I no longer run the company. I don't make decisions. They do all of that. They do 100% of that. Um, last year, I took them to Puerto Rico. They went to AC with me. Um, they can take off as much time off as they want. Like As long as they're doing the, the things that they need to be doing. Um, and this year, I've really given the reins over. I'm like, guys, like, just go market however you want to market. Go figure mm-hmm. it out. Like, here you go. This is an opportunity for you to grow as a person, to figure yourself out. What what things can you put into place? You know, I'm always telling them, you know, if there's holes somewhere, plug them, plug those holes. Um, and I just believe that that's my role at this point is to really develop them, make them better people, not just personally, but professionally for their friends, for the family, for their peers. Um, and that's what it's come down to. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. When you, when I, when we talk about people over profits is like, Oh, he just puts in some nice culture and that's great. No, you just gave them the power to live their own life like you're living your own life. And you can see it how how they're saying they want to work hard so you can live how you want to live and you're doing the same thing right back to them. Yeah. It's a, it's a true partnership, really. It what is. you guys it's have going word. on. It's a partnership. You just got to trust it and let it let it fly, which is was which is tough, right? I mean, the most <laughs> Throwing Todd Bitter aside, if you know Todd, I, do. I mean, if you're if you're an LO, really, he's I mean, freaking, I, I mean, he's a that man, is he's a insane. lunatic. That's right. insane. But I always said like 100 to 140 units a year is what an LO can do on their own. Like that's the max, is what I'm saying. The total max before you just totally burn out. And I've been there. You know, I've done my 100, 140. What no he assistant. do? Two. Well, 40, yeah, he did like 250 or whatever it was. fifty loans by himself, no processor, no nothing. help, nothing. Now, he has a d- different model. He only does a certain type loans. of loan. Like, that's it, you know, which that's a whole nother. You have to have some balls to just be like, no, I'm not taking this loan. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. But imagine if he did. But but that's how he likes to do yeah. it. And that's what's that's the beauty of uh, being a, 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 a just and the broker. If we dive yeah. deeper. You can make it how you want to make it. Yeah. You can make your own culture. Yeah. You're not finding this type of culture at other at l- other lenders. All right. Well, we got like two, three minutes left. All right. I always what ask. Else? Well, I got like two questions. Okay. And we'll we'll come back to Dre if you guys want to jump in. All right. And I'll ask you. I'll ask you a oh, question. We Where do you see the future of the, the industry going? Anybody? Because technology is moving quicker. Uh, I don't you think s- we'll exist by next year. Get out of here. <laughs> That didn't worry anybody, right? <laughs> no, um, you, three five years. Where do you what do you see? So, you you briefly touched on. It. I mean, history repeats itself. Mm-hmm. A right and B. Um, there's a place for everybody, right? So brokers aren't going away. I don't think anything's going to change. Mm-hmm. I think it comes down to, you know, how bad do you want it? How much are you invested? So the best example I can give you is I. I'm broker 100%. I'm never going back. I don't really care what, like, I know now for sure that 10 years into being a broker, mm-hmm. this is who I am, right? And so I'm going to continue to invest in in my company and our people and what we do. So I, I don't really, it, it has no effect on me what fintech does. Yeah, fintech will take a percentage or, mm-hmm. of business, but it's going to be for those, and I'm pardon me if I'm, offending anybody, but yeah. FinTech is going to take those one or two man broker shops who don't build relationships, right? Who don't understand the meaning of building a mm-hmm. true business, right? What yep. I'm doing is I'm building a business based upon relationships, based upon who we are, what we do. Um, so I, the future has no, I, I'm not really worried no, about, worried about the future. What about you? Where do you think it's going? I, I'm in agreement with you. Um, I think there's always going to be the same type of players in the industry. I think technology is only going to help out the loan officer to become better to advise the client mm-hmm. in a much better way. That's a good way to put I, it. I don't, I, advisors are never going to go away. You have yeah. to be an advisor. I'm sure you guys all know that. Yeah. Like you said, the one or two man shops that are, you know, buying leads, just throwing yeah. shit against the wall. But yeah. it's, it, they've always kind of fizzled out anyway. Yeah. 
and nothing's going to change. I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. Same. All right. Someone that is looking to scale and grow and have something like you have, mm -hmm. where you have this, this family, this love and respect for each other, getting each other's back. What, what's the first step someone has to do? Like in your position or anyone can chime in. Like, what do you think that person, that LO that needs to scale, what do they have to do to have what you have? I mean, the first answer is super basic. I don't know if it's the answer well, you're, you're basic. looking for. <laughs> basic I bitch. am a basic bitch. <laughs> have you seen my Uggs? <laughs> Dude, I got some sick Uggs too. Exactly. Right. So you're basic too. Well, I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's all, folks. Now, okay. Thank you for coming to my podcast. <laughs> Um, the, <laughs> thank you for coming to my TED talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the first answer is hiring an assistant. Is that the answer you're looking for? You're looking for something deeper. I, I would like, well, I mean, yes, but that, yeah, it's more, I want to go a little <laughs> bit deeper because I really want to hit on this type of family that you have right here and how to get to that. Um, I know that's a man, tough question. It, it's, it's but definitely it hiring. It, the first step would have been, would be to hire an assistant and pour into people without having the reservation that they may one day leave you. Pour into mm. them, love into them, give them everything you have, right? Um, because some people hold back. People don't go all in. They don't. I'm one of them, go. man. Like I've had I have too much in? PTSD <laughs> or trauma with with hiring and <laughs> with with people that yeah leave <laughs> scars, little scars. You know, call it. You know, you asked how do you get this way. And they keep saying, you know, we learned this from Andre. We learned this from Andre. You got to get a coach. Like, you've got to get somebody who's better than you. You've got to hang around. I mean, you already know this. You got to hang around high-level people. Mm -hmm. As a 22-year-old, my brain was not, did, did not operate this way. As I grew, I had to hang around people who knew more. I had to get a coach. And all of these people poured into me. And that's why I've been able to pour into my people, right? Um, and I think that's the secret is, you know, giving out what people give to you. And it's the only way to, to continue getting it is giving it back. So go all in, be transparent. And what I got, take a chance on the person, not just what their past was. Yeah. Yeah. Take a chance on the person. That's all I got. That's all I got. Thank you for coming Thank to my guys. TED Talk. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> there it is. Keystone Alliance, the whole family. Love you guys. That was awesome. Thank you.